Welcome to evening prayer. This is a chance for us to settle ourselves in God's presence, to offer the day to God and to express ourselves using the words of the Psalms. Tonight it's Psalm 64. So you can open your own Bible. I'm using a New International Version. Or if you want to join in with those words, you can click the link with this video. We're going to light this candle as a reminder of the presence of Jesus with us. Uh, maybe you'd like to do the same with the candle at home. And then we're going to be still. We light this candle as a reminder of the presence of Jesus, the light of the world. Holy Spirit, come. We welcome you here. Thank you that you long to meet with us. Thank you that you long to speak to us. Lord, take our stresses and strains, our worries and concerns. Remind us that we are safe with you. Amen. Now, if you spend any time at all on social media or in a newspaper, before long, you will see people deploying the exclamation marks or the angry face emojis or the sick face emojis. Because in our world, we trade in outrage and complaint. Have you noticed how, how often you find people complaining loudly and aggressively about things that don't really matter? And when this happens, it might be because those people haven't been allowed to complain about the things that do matter. Maybe they've been hurt. Maybe they live every day with injustice. Maybe they feel like the world is stacked up against them. But no one will listen. It seems like no one hears the cries of their hearts. And so all that anger, that frustration, that grief, it comes out somewhere else. This psalm is a psalm of complaint. A reminder that there is one who hears the cries of our hearts. Now the cries of our hearts are not very often carefully considered. The cries of our hearts are not very often theologically correct. The cries of our hearts are not very often articulate. But when we come to God, we don't need to be carefully considered or theologically correct or articulate. The psalm is a psalm of David. He is under threat from enemies. 
And when you're an ancient Near Eastern king and you're under threat of enemies, that most likely means that there are people trying to kill you, uh, trying to hurt your family, perhaps even bring down your kingdom. Now, we are not in David's shoes, but we can relate to his complaint. Someone at the office who's always trying to bring you down. A former friend turning people against you. A family member who only sees the bad in you. We maybe don't like to call them enemies, but we know what it is like to feel that someone has set themselves against us. Sometimes maybe we daydream about our enemies getting their comeuppance. Maybe if we feel threatened, we even uh, imagine ourselves suddenly becoming a very well-trained ninja who can sort them out once and for all. David does something like that in this psalm. Except rather than seeing himself as the super-powered uh, warrior, David imagines God as the warrior who's coming to his rescue. Now, it might not be theologically correct, but God doesn't picture, or David doesn't picture God uh, coming to these enemies and showing them the error of their ways and creating some kind of reconciliation between the enemies and David. Now, David just imagines God taking them out. And that's okay. Remember, this is a complaint. This is a heart cry. So whether or not you feel like there are people set against you right now, let's pray these words together and know that our God hears our complaint. Let's pray. Hear me, my God, as I voice my complaint. Protect my life from the threat of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the plots of evildoers. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim cruel words like deadly arrows. They shoot from ambush at the innocent. They shoot suddenly without fear. They encourage each other in their evil plans. They talk about hiding their snares. They say, who will see it? They plot injustice and say, we have devised a perfect plan. Surely the human mind and heart are cunning. But God will shoot them with his arrows. They will suddenly be struck down. He will turn their own tongues against them and bring them to ruin. And all who see them will shake their heads in scorn. All people will fear. They will proclaim the works of God and ponder what he has done. The righteous will rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. All the upright in heart will glory in him. I want to keep praying. I want to use the words of the psalm to jump off in the prayer. So I'm just going to um, pray whatever's on my heart. Just encourage you to do the same. Lord, we thank you that you are the God who hears the cries of our heart. God, you hear our complaints. You long for us to be open and honest with you and not worry about getting it right or being theologically correct or being articulate. Um, Lord, in Romans, we read uh, about prayers that are like groaning, just wordless groans to you, because sometimes that's all we can manage. Lord, thank you that you invite that kind of honest relationship with you. 
an honest outpouring of emotion. Lord, we want to acknowledge before you our enemies. Though maybe we don't like to use that word. Those whose hearts are turned against us. Those who are deliberately making our lives difficult. Those where our relationship with them has broken down. And Lord, as, as Jesus taught us, we want to pray for blessing for our enemies. We want to pray for um, an encounter with you that would change their lives, change their hearts, change their ways. And thus make our lives better, make the world a better place. But Lord, thank you that you also invite the honesty of uh, of David's prayer that you'd just get them <laughs> that you'd just sort them out that there would be comeuppance that there'd be justice God our hearts cry for justice too for right to be done thank you Lord that you don't turn away any heart that's crying out for justice so we pray that you would come as a warrior, as a rescuer, with your arrows um, to those who are being abused today. To those who are kept in slavery today, including those in our town. That you would come as a rescuer to those who no one else will speak up for. Rescuing God, God of justice. Keep us after your heart. May our actions in the world be your actions in the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now to finish our time together, some words of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>